Hello everyone, I'm Elkizadek and I'm Neville and welcome back to another episode of the Kansa News. So it doesn't have a name yet. Yeah, we don't have a name but you know, we're just here <laughs> cool. talking about the Kansa News. Yeah, about Kansa News. Like anything related to space and anything related to our project which is Kansa. Kansa is an abbreviation for Kibera Aeronautics and Space Academy and what we do is to teach kids and young people from Kibera to dream and actualize their dreams in making the world a better place through space exploration. Is that right, Neville? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so before we start this episode, I have mm -hmm. uh, an activity. Sure, so we can bring it down. Do. Light the nap, yeah, that's fair. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. Mm -hmm. So we are going to do, you are going to draw a square mm -hmm. using your left hand. So draw a square. So let's do it together. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just do it. Continue doing it. Again. Yeah. Draw your square. Draw your square. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, uh -huh. with your right hand, uh -huh. you are going to draw a triangle. So okay. you have two shapes at the same time simultaneously. Okay. So continue drawing your 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 square. Okay. Uh, now draw. Continue. Now do at the same time draw your rectangle, your triangle rather, and the square. Do you see what is the news? <laughs> Those are not. That's not what I've told you to do. You are just doing it. <laughs> this so is, the, this the, is hard. <laughs> so the idea, the idea is human beings, we were made to single task. So we are we are always just multitasking, but it's not our thing. Uh, we were. We are designed, we have, you know, the way we have evolved, we have evolved to single tasking, not to multitasking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah, can you actually do that? Can you actually... It's really hard. Unless you're a genius, you can uh -huh. do it. Or if you practice, like... Yeah. A, guys who do juggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, the guys who do juggling can do better. Ha you. Have you seen this Chinese kid who is solving three Rubik's cubes while juggling them? Uh -huh. Took him... Less than five minutes. Can't remember the exact amount of time. Yeah, so I can't even like do the simple the simple. Uh -huh. So I'm really into single tasking. I can't do two tasks. I'm bad at uh, multitasking. Yeah, I guess. even at work. So that's one of my challenges. Nice. It's not a challenge actually. It's my superpower. I can only yeah. single task. Yeah, it allows you <laughs> to focus more on what you're doing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so today we are going to talk about some topics related to space exploration. Yeah. And at last we are going to talk about our project. We have a campaign, we are running a campaign right now. We are at $72. We are expecting to raise it at 57. Yeah, no, somebody else okay. has just done it. Nice. 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 <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Yeah, but we are we are $72. We expect to raise $3,500 by the end of the next like by the end of December, we should have three thousand five hundred dollars. The amount is meant to help us uh, source funds. Actually, we are sourcing funds to help us develop the micro courses and also to buy the equipment for the sessions. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's seventy-two thousand seventy-two dollars. Nice, yeah. nice. So we are doing pretty good. So. You are going to take us through the first topic, so we can talk about the campaign as we do. Yeah, as sure, we, as sure, 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 sure. So, so the first topic, the first thing that we are going to discuss today is Femi Paradox. Yeah, the I don't Femi know what paradox. that means, like honestly. Yeah. So you are going to explain to us what's Femi Paradox. Yeah, and I intentionally didn't want you to know more about it. Just wanted to introduce the basic concept. Okay. So what you're going to do today is more of an introduction rather than an exhaustive technical and scientific review mm. of the Femi Paradox. Mm. Anyway, so the, this guy is called Enrico Femi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Enrico Femi is a scientist, I think. So Enrico Femi was taking lunch with his colleagues and he thought about, he had this paradox in his mind. Like, if if there's so many stars, there's so many galaxies, mm -hmm. and some 
and a whole lot of other factors. Why haven't we, why hasn't intelligent life developed in any other part of the universe? So and like, if it has so, developed, something like uh -huh. aliens? Exactly, something okay. like aliens. So essentially, let me just read it off Wikipedia. Okay. This is a more convincing argument. So there is this other guy called Michael Hart. Mm -hmm. So he formalized what Enrico Femi was saying mm -hmm. in a paper. So part of the things he said is, um, just reading it in verbatim, mm -hmm. there are billions of stars in the galaxy that are similar to the sun, right? Yeah. And many of these stars are billions of years older than the solar system, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Yeah. Second thing, with a very high probability, some of these stars have Earth-like planets. Yeah, so that's a probability, so we, we are not sure yet. Yeah, I know, but we have observed... I know, uh, uh -huh. what's, the, what's the name, like, the Proxima Centauri B? Mm, yeah, it's like 4.6 million light, billion light years away. Proxima Centauri B. It's, it's like uh, Centauri, like it's like, like a swelly word Centauri B. Ah. So it's, it's like a, a, another solar system which is uh -huh. another, a different solar system and it is suspected yeah. to contain life. There are like a lot, lots of water mm -hmm. in it. So actually, actually one of the ways to defer, determine whether a planet uh, might contain life mm -hmm. is the uh, availability of water. Yeah. So they suspect the Proxima Centauri B has some water in it. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure about the official stats, yeah. but I think a couple of planets do have water on them. Even if it's in form of ice. Yeah. Yeah, a couple do. Even, even there's a moon in Saturn? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Titan. 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 Yeah. Titan. Uh, the other thing is, um. The other thing he said is, uh, let me just repeat what I said, with high probability some of these stars have Earth-like planets mm -hmm. and if the Earth is typical, some may have already developed intelligent life. Yeah. Uh, third point, some of these civilizations mm -hmm. from the intelligent life that has developed there mm -hmm. may have developed interstellar travel, a step which we are investigating at the moment. Okay. Uh, and then the other point is that even at the slow pace of currently envisioned interstellar travel, mm. the Milky Way galaxy could be completely traversed in a few million years. So the question is, where are the aliens? Yeah, you know, I, personally, I believe they are aliens. You know, like uh -huh. they exist somewhere, but yeah. we've, never, we've never come in contact with them, yeah. probably, or mm -hmm. we've never communicated with them. Yeah. Because, like, just uh, what you say, mm -hmm. probably, mm -hmm. uh, they are really intelligent, they are way much better, like, way much more intelligent than, uh -huh. than human beings. Yeah. So, even communicating to them mm -hmm. will be a challenge. So, they might hear, they might be just around us, hearing everything that we do and mm -hmm. everything that we say, but we are able, we're not able to figure out how they're communicating. Yeah, there's a time actually when uh -huh. I, a while back I thought maybe mm -hmm. the, genius, the, the genius people mm -hmm. or maybe the government, uh, this mental construct, yeah. like things like man, the people yeah. came up with these ideas, maybe, they, maybe, who knows, maybe there are some, you know, aliens that are ruling the entire universe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're part that's of us. Right yeah, that's, yeah, they're part are they of invisible? Us. Are they existing in a form like human no, that, beings? Like that, that they are human beings actually. They're like we share everything, like the characteristics and mm -hmm. the, the DNA. Mm -hmm. They're just on But then they came from another planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. just my theory. It's, it's, uh, it's makes really sense. Like, makes yeah. sense. So you can say that someone like Bill Gates is uh, an alien. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
you're a huge fan of Elon. I thought you'd say Elon. Yeah, but like I would say Elon is but Elon is really interested in finding the yeah, thing, like okay, yeah. doing going to Mars and stuff. So I would I would, I would say he's a maybe he's a, maybe he's trying to look for his parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or trying to go back to where he came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His childhood home. Yeah. So anyway, so the, there is another guy called Frank Drake. So he came up with the Drake <laughs> equation. <laughs> so the Drake equation uh -huh. is used to calculate the probability of intelligent life existing in the universe. Basically, the number of civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy mm. whose electromagnetic emissions are detectable mm. is equal to the rate of formation of stars suitable for development of intelligent life multiplied by fraction of stars with planetary systems, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that's the Drake equation. Okay. First time I had Drake equation. Yeah, you know, I was <laughs> thinking of uh, another person. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, um, of course, people have come up with some, a couple of possible explanations for the Fermi paradox, mm. why we haven't seen the aliens yet. Mm. Um, one of the biggest explanations for that mm. is one by this guy called Peter Peter Ward. So he wrote a book mm. in I think 2000 mm. called Rare Earth: Why Complex Life Is Uncommon in the Universe. So basically his proposition is that there's a huge number of factors which lead to intelligent life to develop mm. and it's more, it's um, the probability that those factors are suitable simultaneously is very low. So for instance, mm. uh, this guy was saying that the fact that Jupiter is close to Earth causes Jupiter to attract a lot of asteroids that might actually come and destroy Earth, something of the sort. Yeah. So anyway, so he was saying there are so many factors that are involved. For instance, the moon being around Earth mm -hmm. cause of the tides caused by the moon, it it also it's also suitable for development of life, the tides in the ocean. Yeah. So there's a lot of things he said um, relating to that. Okay. Yeah. So that's gen uh, an overview of what Fermi paradox is. Yeah. So anyway, the most interesting bit mm. is possible explanations for it. Like, if we have this set of facts and if we take the set of facts, the probability is very high that intelligent life exists. Why don't we see it? Why? Yeah. So for instance, you said maybe we're not able to communicate with them. Yeah. Uh, another interesting point I saw was that maybe colonizing other regions mm. is not the norm in other civilizations. People are not out to go and colonize. That, the same way human beings are. Yeah. It makes sense. I will say also, mm -hmm. maybe they exist, but they are really, really far away from us. Yeah, yeah that's another so point. Our radar, like the signals that we've sent, mm -hmm. uh, they have not covered a, very, uh, like a long distance uh -huh. from where Earth is located. So yeah. maybe, you know, like it's something like uh, 100 meters mm -hmm. radius, 100 yeah. meters radius, but mm -hmm. you've only covered 5 meters. Uh -huh. So who knows, maybe the aliens exist in the remaining 95 meters. Um, if the aliens are so intelligent, yeah. then why haven't they developed communication systems or travel systems that are able to reach Earth? Yeah, that's that's a fair question. I would say like there's no, I, I don't have an answer for that. So my theory would be, we don't know, we don't know how much intelligent they are, you know, uh -huh. like compared to us. So we are also really intelligent. Probably they are also waiting, uh, us to go and visit them. And the uh -huh. way you know, you know how we are really struggling right now to get to uh -huh. Mars, to get to Moon, yeah. to get to other planets and uh -huh. other bodies. That's how probably they are also mm -hmm. struggling. You know? Makes sense. Like, 
they, they are really intelligent, but that does not mean that they have answers to all, all the questions that mm -hmm. the universe, or all the questions of the universe. Mm -hmm. So they have to struggle to probably uh, the communication systems and the travel systems. Is, those are some of the challenges that they are also facing to visiting mm -hmm. the Earth or, or the Moon or any other mm -hmm. near body. Mm -hmm. Makes makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 So pro we should go to the next topic. Just a second. Okay. I, I found this really interesting. Okay. So let me just go through the possible explanations for the paradox. Still off Wikipedia, but I'm just outlining them. Okay. Extraterrestrial life is rare or non-existent. Mm. No other intelligent species of have, have developed. No other. Explain more about that. No other intelligent species of raising? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you think about the statement? It's possibly true. Okay. Based on the rare earth hypothesis. But this case is that it's really hard for intelligent life to develop and we're really lucky as human beings. Because there is this huge huge number of set of factors that were just right for humanity to develop. For okay. intelligent life to develop. Okay, so we are the most intelligent species existing. Yeah. Yes. That's the concept of that. Yeah, thing. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, the other point is intelligent alien lack advanced <laughs> technology. <laughs> if they're intelligent, how can they learn? <laughs> Maybe advanced technology? you see how human beings started from developing language and stuff. Yeah, maybe they're focusing on feeding their, their population. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> human beings haven't figured that out yet. Okay. Just kidding. Anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. What are our hypotheses? Maybe I should look, should look at that. It's the nature of intelligent life to destroy itself. This was yeah, also that's really true. interesting. That's really true. Yeah. That's true because that's what is happening here on Earth. Like things yeah. with global warming. And nuclear wars, and you know, the more we develop, mm -hmm. uh, we advance in technology, yeah. the more threats we are causing to our, uh -huh. our species. So, intelligent life developed, and then they just destroy themselves. Yeah, they blow themselves up, uh -huh. and then the planet, they destroy Makes the planet, sense. and then they start another. That's thing. just in tandem with the next point is the nature of intelligent life to destroy others, yeah. periodic extinction by natural events, True. intelligent. Civilizations are too, uh, too far apart, lack of resources, lack of desire to live on planets. Guys are saying they probably live on spaceships. Okay, yeah. that, that's true, but for yeah. us as humans, uh -huh. we like to explore. So we are never uh -huh. contented, you know. Like as a human being, we can, we can never be contented by living on spaceships. Yeah. When you get like, it's the same thing, when you get a bicycle, you want a motorbike. When you uh, get a motorbike, you want a car. When yeah. you get a car, Makes you want sense. a private jet suit. So. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. The other points just go through quickly. Human beings have not existed long enough. We're not listening properly. Uh, they tend to isolate themselves. Outcomes between all and nothing. They are too alien. Everyone is listening, <laughs> but no one is transmitting. Earth is deliberately not contacted. The aliens decided these guys are too dumb, so <laughs> we'll yeah. just keep them out of the loop. Probably. That's uh, it's dangerous to communicate. <laughs> and then the final point, they are here, but we are not acknowledging them. I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'm a good fan of the last point. Uh, ah, yeah. UFOs. Yeah, maybe they are here, <laughs> but we don't acknowledge them. Mm -hmm. ah, nice. But this is an interesting topic we should, which we should revisit sometime. Definitely, definitely. And we also yeah. want to hear from you guys what you think about the Fermi Paradox, whether the aliens exist or they don't exist. Sure.